Okay, in this video I would like to investigate the variance or covariance of the ordinary least squares estimator with respect to the estimated parameter vector w hat. So the variance here becomes of course a variance matrix or covariance matrix which has a square form of q times q elements and the variance of course is defined as the expectation of w hat minus the expectation of w hat so this is basically uh, a column vector and multiplied with the uh, w hat minus expectation of w hat transpose so that becomes a row vector which is why this is a q times q matrix what is the interpretation of the variance of the parameter vector w hat which we identify by least squares using data of course, the interpretation is how uncertain it is to identify certain parameters, right? So we are interested in a variance matrix with rather low uh, values inside because they would indicate that we are able to identify the parameter vector, which is encoded here in our system model, with a rather high, uh, with a rather high likely uh, accurate probability. Okay, let's investigate the variance a little bit more closely by inserting what we already know. So uh, W hat, of course, is just the solution from the OLS uh, approach, which we have identified previously, which is Z transpose times Z, inverse times Z transpose times Y, right? So that is what we already know. And as we consider also our noise, we need to add the noise term here as well. The expectation of W hat using these three assumptions from the previous video on the bias property of the ordinary least squares estimator of course says that the expectation of W hat is W because we have proven in the previous video that applying these assumptions that the ordinary least squares estimator is a bias-free estimator. Okay, and with these three assumptions and these intermediate findings, if we plug these intermediate findings in and calculate everything with each other, so I'm just skipping here one or two manual calculation steps, what we get is that the variance of uh, W hat is that transpose times that inverse times that transpose times the expectation of nu times nu transpose nu again here as the vector of random noise times that times that transpose times that inverse so as I said, I'm just skipping here two or three intermediate steps. However, what we have done so far is just we have inserted our intermediate findings for omega hat and for the expectation of omega hat and then basically just did this multiplication of these two parentheses terms. Okay, so this is our intermediate finding. And in order to analyze this further, we need to make some assumption how the noise of, um, or the noise which is represented here, by nu is basically shaped in terms of its variance because this expectation of nu times nu transpose if we have a look at this here this is basically the variance of nu when we consider that the expectation of nu is zero which we did in the previous video so this expectation of nu times nu transpose is basically the variance and there we apply another first and last assumption for this investigation. And we will assume as a first and last assumption that the noise has a constant variance. And that is variance of nu 
ist Sigma nu square times the identity matrix. So that means that every element so, uh, of this um, noise vector has the same and constant uh, variance, which is sigma nu square times an identity matrix, right? So this is our assumption here. And this basically means that over time, especially the noise process is constant, it does not change its variance, and it's basically just uh, a constant variance for all n or capital N measurement points. With this assumption, which we can directly plug in for this one, so if we apply that, we get the variance of w hat, plugging that in and putting this sigma nu square to the front and considering that it's multiplied with the identity matrix, what we get is sigma nu square times that transpose times that inverse times that transpose times that times that transpose times that inverse, right? So we have just plugged in this part here and then considered that this is an identity matrix. We can basically ignore that for the moment and just put this scalar. So maybe I can make this here more clear. So this is an identity matrix or this entire term is an identity matrix in the form of sigma nu square, sigma nu square, and these are zero blocks. So therefore the sigma nu square is a constant and can be put in front. If you analyze th this equation, we can of course see that this is basically again the identity matrix because we have z transpose times z inverse times the same entry here of the parenthesis without the inverse. So this is basically just the definition of the uh, identity matrix. And what we get from that is that the variance of w hat becomes finally nu or sigma nu square times this element here, which remains, which is that transpose times that inverse, right? So this is the final result. When we apply our assumptions A1 to A4 with the fourth assumption that the noise of the uh, output measurements are constant. If we have a closer look at this result for the variance of the estimated parameter vector, so the level of uncertainty we have, we can basically find that this has two components. The first component is the level of output noise, which is represented by sigma square nu. And this basically means the higher the noise term, which is available or which is applicable here at the output, the more uncertain the parameter estimates. And that is actually somehow intuitive and also something which we have already seen in the, one of the previous uh, car model identification videos. However, we also have a second component here, which is Z transpose times Z inverse. And in Z, of course, these are the regressor values, so our observables on the input part of the model. And this means that the data which we store in the regressor matrix seems to have also an impact on the uncertainty of the parameter estimate. So that means if we have, let's say, a bad day and in Z there is insufficient data which is not information rich, obviously it can happen that the variance and therefore the uncertainty of identifying the parameters can go up. Or on the other way, if we collect uh, suitable data so that this uh, basically becomes a very small variance matrix, then the uncertainty of the parameter estimate can be decreased, right? So two components, output noise level and 
data distribution or data collection saved in the regressor matrix. Actually, what we can also find is we don't prove it here formally, but we can also find that the OLS, so the uh, ordinary least squares estimator is also a so-called efficient estimator, which basically means that you can not find any other linear estimator or linear approach, which is able to come up with a bias-free estimate, which has a lower variance as the ordinary least squares, which is why we call the ordinary least squares estimator efficient, because it has also the lowest amount of variance under all linear estimator approaches. What this in practice will uh, basically mean, we will also see in more detail in the next video, where we will consider different uncertainty measures by, again, our simulative car example. See you then.